Hi, Year 4, and welcome to a slightly different look for today's English lesson. So I had a good think about how we could learn to write our ideas out really clearly um, in a way that would work remotely with you being at home um, and me at the moment being at home and us not being in school together. And so I've come up with a cunning plan. We're going to have a go today at looking through our learning slides as usual. But instead of me just being a little picture up in your screen, talking you through, I'm also going to have a go at doing some live modelling for you here on this fabulous easel. OK, I've got my trusty whiteboard pens with me. OK, and we're going to have a go at writing down our ideas together because I understand and know that writing can for many of us be a, a tricky process and sometimes it's really hard to know where to start. So today we'll think about the ideas we uh, developed yesterday. We'll look at some sentence stem ideas um, and I'll also just talk you through the process as a writer. OK, let's get started. I'm really excited. Let's see then. I'm just going to share my screen with you now. So I'll appear up in the top here. Here we go. Fantastic. Right. So it is Wednesday, the 13th of January 2021. And our learning objective today is to write an engaging narrative using descriptive techniques. And quite simply, we have three steps to success for this. OK, we're story writing, writing an engaging narrative. We don't want to be dry or boring or dull. We want this to really hook our reader in and grip them and be an exciting thing to write and to read. OK, so three things then, as I said, I want you to do these actions with me. Pretend I can see you. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think it. So put your finger on your head, we're going to think it and pull a thinking face. Mm. You've got to be thinking of lots of ideas today. OK, the second thing you've got to do is say it. So I want you to get your finger and say it. So number one, say with me, think it. Step two, say it. And step three, write it. So can you show me step three? Write it. Pretend you've got a pen or if you have got a pen, write it across the page. Right, let's just recap very quickly. Number one, think it. Number two, say it. Number three, write it. And what I really want to encourage you today with is just going for it. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just start your journey as a writer by getting your ideas on the page. That's the first, um, the most important thing to do. OK, let's go on to our next slide, shall we? And then think about some live modelling. Right. So this is familiar from Monday's lesson, isn't it? OK, where we mapped out all of the key plot points in the story. Um, thinking about the characters' feelings here, so positive and negative character feelings. We are going to now take a look at this section that I'm highlighting with my arrow here. We're going to look at the story opening together, uh, where we discover the sapphire cartouche. Our archaeologist accidentally presses a button on it, it makes a strange noise, and this enormous statue rises up out from underneath the pyramid. Okay, let's get started, shall we? So an important thing for you to have out at the moment is your piece of work from yesterday. You'll need to have the ideas that you generated in front of you, OK, just like I've got here. And it's really important that we use these in our writing. You won't necessarily use all of these ideas, OK, but uh, they're a good starting point and they might even inspire even better ideas to come out when you are writing. So in this first section, to keep things really simple, we are going to be concentrating on our adverbs and adverbial phrases in our opening section. Now, of course, we'll use other writing techniques as we go, but that's going to be our main focus. So I'm just going to remind myself of those words now. We've got desperately, suddenly, instantly, incredibly, without hesitation, all of a sudden, without warning, inside the dig pit and in the burning sun. OK, going to keep those in mind. All right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you this next slide so we can see the pictures from that part of the story. OK, um, and then we can have a go at writing our very first paragraph. And we're going to focus on three sentences, three high quality sentences. So we're not writing masses and masses and masses. OK, we're thinking quality, capturing that story really well. OK, let's move on to the next slide. So this is what we're focusing on. I'm just going to move myself out of the way. OK, 
So we're going to think it, we're going to say it, and we're going to write it. Okay, so those are our three steps. Now, this section we've just recapped here. This is the opening of our story, and those pictures are there just to give me some handy hints and to remind me and help me stick to the right part of the story so I don't carry on beyond where I'm meant to be going. Here's my symbol to remind me that I'm focusing on adverbs and adverbial phrases. And what I've got here, everybody, is I have got an example that I have written beforehand. But I'm also going to live model on here because actually I think it's really useful for you to see how a writer actually goes about doing the writing. OK, so let's just have a little look here. We're looking for our adverbs and adverbial phrases. I'm going to read this example and I'm going to put my own example up here on the board with you. So in the glare of the blinding desert sun, the determined archaeologist knelt down to brush the golden grains to see if they revealed some treasure. Out of nowhere, he discovered a sapphire cartouche, which he lifted to inspect. Without warning, the cartouche beats, and instantly the giant pyramid in the distance began to rise. Okay, so that's where we need to get to in our story. I'm now going to just stop sharing the slides for a moment, and you're now back here with me, and we're on uh, our whiteboard here. Okay, so we're going to start off with adverbs and adverbial phrases. Okay, now we can use those in the sentence, but we also know from last week we can use fronted adverbials at the beginning of a sentence. Okay, so I really like the idea of setting the scene to start off this story, so our reader is instantly transported to the deserts of Egypt. So I'm going to start my sentence here, and I've got an idea, I'm thinking of it, in, it's going to be in, it's going to be a where adverbial, uh, so I'm going to say in the scorching desert, in the glaring desert, in the hot desert, mm. That vocabulary isn't as good as, as I could. Um, let me see, in the blazing hot desert, in the endless desert, can you see how I'm thinking my ideas and I'm speaking them out loud, okay? I think I am going to go for in the blazing endless desert, okay? So I'm gonna write that idea down, okay, as a starting point for my sentence. In the blazing, I'm use my lovely jitnoi, joined neat handwriting in the blazing I'm using two adjectives here so I need a comma between them in the blazing endless desert one s comma I'm really pleased with that starting point there because I've used some really cracking adjectives and I've also written an adverbial, so I've, I've met my descriptive technique target that I was aiming for. In the blazing endless desert, I need to go straight in instantly and describe what is happening. I don't have a lot of words, I'm not writing a lot, so I need to go straight in now and think about what my archaeologist is doing. Okay, so I can talk about uh, my archaeologist on the sand, and I remember from the video that he's in the pit, isn't he? and he kneels down to brush off the sand. So I'm going to put here, in the blazing endless desert, the archaeologist, I think the archaeologist, the archaeologist knelt down and brushed the sand, brushed the sand hopefully. Oh, that's how he's brushing the sand. That's an adverb. And he's hopeful of finding some treasure. So in the blazing endless desert, the archaeologist knelt down and brushed the sand, hopefully. Right, I've got it. I've thought it, I've said it, now I've just got to write it. So in the blazing endless desert, the archaeologist uh, knelt, that's a silent K, knelt. Knelt down in that. I'm going to just pop an extra adjective in here as well. In the golden in the golden sand and brush I'm going to put the grains because I don't want to repeat sand again and brush the grains 
hopefully. Full stop. Always remember that bit of end punctuation there. And another thing that we're going to do, a really good writer does, I'm going to reread my sentence to make sure that it makes sense. Okay. In the blazing, comma, endless desert, comma, the archaeologist knelt down in the golden sand and brushed the grains hopefully. Great. It makes sense. I'm really pleased with it. I'm especially pleased because I've remembered my capital letter and my full stops, my punctuation is tip top. I'm also really pleased because I have used uh, a fronted adverbial phrase at the beginning of my sentence. I remembered my comma as well. Uh, I've used a couple of lovely um, adjectives here. I've also described the sand. So I've used some noun phrases. And I am really pleased to say that I have managed to put an adverb in there as well at the end. Now, I'm not going to model the next two sentences. I'm going to let you go back to the sides now and have a little look and have a go yourself. OK, I'll then model the first sentence of the next paragraph and then the first sentence of the last paragraph, each time giving you a chance to pause the video and write your own ideas. OK, so let's go back to the slides. Fantastic, there we go. And it's now your time to pause the video, have a think about everything that I've been talking about, have a look at the screen, use the pictures as a cue, remember to think it, say it, write it, and you can magpie any of my ideas, any of my adverbial phrases or adverbs in the bold here, or any of the other ideas that I've used in creating your own sentences. Okay, pause the video now, and give it a go, writers. Fantastic. OK, so I hope you've had a first try at your sentences. Uh, so we have the opening now. Let's just check where we're up to with our story narrative. We've written the opening. OK, uh, and we now need to concentrate on this section, the middle part of our story, where the archaeologist goes all the way up the staircase, right to the top, uh, the opening of the tomb and then steps inside. So that's what we're going to be writing about next. Okay, so let's take a little look. Here's our next slide. This should be familiar to you. Okay, we've got our picture cues up here to help us remember the sequence and what happens in this part. And we're concentrating this time on the sounds, okay, that we can hear. We're going to be describing using our sounds, okay? So, Let's read through this example here and then we'll go back to my uh, board for modelling. OK, before a minute had passed, the eager archaeologist stood at the top of the endless sandy steps, panting in the oppressive heat. I borrowed that from yesterday, oppressive. As he admired the ornate hieroglyphics around the open doorway, his heart thumped hard against his chest. As he stepped into the pyramid's dark interior, his footsteps echoed off the limestone walls. Okay, right, so there's our example there. We're gonna come back to live uh, writing modeling once I've just found my board rubber so I can get it a bit clear. Okay, uh, and then we can have a go at writing some more sentences together. Okay, close that up. Brilliant. Let me stop the share. Ah, right, okay, we're back together again. Okay, let's get rid of that sentence there. Happy with that one. Obviously, you've got yours written down on the paper. So let's go again with this one. Okay. So on the previous slide, you saw the three pictures. And what would be really good is if you have one sentence per picture. So then you capture that whole part in three sentences. Okay. Right, so in that first picture, okay, I can remember uh, it's from the side, isn't it? And there's all those steps and the archaeologist is making his way um, up to the top. So I think what I'm gonna start with is I want to emphasize how puffed out the archaeologist is. He's just walked all the way across the desert and all the way up hundreds, it must've been of those steps right up into the pyramid. Okay, and I think if I were to do that, sometimes even when I just come up the stairs, 
I'm panting a little bit, especially if I run up them. So I think you want this idea of panting, okay? And I think panting heavily, because it's so hot, okay? So that's gonna be my starting point here. So I'm gonna be thinking, uh, I'm still gonna use an adverbial, I think, and a punch adverbial, panting heavily in the oppressive heat. Yeah, I like that one. I'm gonna write that down. Remembering my capital letter and my joint hand writing. Panting heavily in the oppressive heat. I think I need to get the idea that he's now the where part. He's now at the top um, of the steps into the tomb. Panting heavily in the oppressive heat, he stood at the top of the stairway into the tomb. Okay. Mm -hmm. He stood at the top of the stairway into the tomb. I'm thinking it. Okay, I'm saying it and I've got to write it. He stared at the top. Or he stood. He stared or he stood. He stood at the top uh -huh, of the stairway and stared at the tomb's entrance. That's got it. Panting heavily in the oppressive heat. He stood. at the top and I think I need to emphasize here actually how long this stair, how big this stair was. He stood at the top of the, I'm gonna put endless, endless, endless. Notice how you can sometimes add in ideas as you're going. And he stood at the top of the endless stairway And and stared at stared at the entrance to the tomb. Full stop. Okay, like all good writers, let's read it through and check. Panting heavily in the oppressive heat, comma, he stood at the top of the endless stairway and stared at the entrance to the tomb. So that's quite a long sentence, and it would be absolutely fine if you are writing shorter sentences than that. That's absolutely fine. The most important thing is that they make sense. There's no point writing lots of long sentences if they don't make sense. All right, so stick with what you can do. Obviously, try your best and magpie as many ideas as you like. Okay, uh, but this is my idea for here. I've got my capital letter, I've got my full stop, and remember we're looking for sounds. We've got panting, oh, use my white colour. You've got panting heavily. Okay, so I've got this sound of this panting. Okay, I now need to think about the other sounds, as do you, that you might hear um, going into the open tumor, maybe oh, the gasps, and that could be a good sound. Go back to your ideas from yesterday to check. Uh, and when he goes into the tomb, we know there's that great big thudding sound of the doorway closing behind him, trapping him in the dark. Okay, let's go back to the slide. Okay, so you can take a look at the example, pause the video, and then have a go at this section of our story. Okay, there we go. Right, so pause now and have a go at writing the next three sentences. Here's my first sentence just to start you off. And then I would like you to write two more. So three sentences in total. Off you go. Right then, well done. We're on the final hurdle. Well done. This is like a marathon. You're doing ever so well, continuing this journey as a writer. And, and I hope you're really proud of what you've written so far. It won't be perfect. We'll have a go at um, polishing it tomorrow, editing it and publishing it tomorrow. But this is really good um, to go through and finish off now. So let's have a look. We are now in the final stages of our story and we are here at the end. Okay, 
where the archaeologist um, is uh, rocketed out of the pyramid uh, and then lands in his dig pit, staring back at the pyramid, sort of wondering what on earth happened. Okay, so let's go and look at these again. Okay, now I've forgotten my symbols on here, but you remember them, don't you? Step one, think it. Step two, speak it, say it. Step three, write it. Okay, so for this section of our story, we're going to concentrate on actions, okay, things that happened. Okay, we'll read through this model. Each sentence is based on each of these images here, so we're retelling that narrative. Let's read through together. Meanwhile, the camel, who was sat lazily by the dig pit, caught sight of the shiny cartouche. Within seconds, it was in his mouth and he chomped noisily on the golden brains. The face of the pyramid changed shape a number of times before it lowered back down into the dusty ground. Suddenly, the archaeologist was rocketed across the sky from a gap in the limestone and landed roughly back in his dig pit. Both he and the camel stared up at the pyramid in disbelief. Okay, let's go back to the writing board and then carry on with our writing. Here we go. Right, let's just grab the sentence here. Oh, this is exciting because we're ending. Keep up the stamina, keep up the effort. Don't do sort of think, oh, I'll stop now or I'll just do half an effort. Don't do that, don't finish with a whimper, finish with a bang. Let's go for it. Okay. Right, Whew, it's exciting. Whew, never done this like this before, my easel, so let's go. Right, so we're thinking first of all of that first picture of the end part of our story, and that's the camel. Chomping on that cartoon, isn't it? And that causes it to do all sorts of incredible things, uh, changing the, the, the face of the statue. Now for this, my, con my concentration in terms of my writing is on the action. So I wanna be using powerful verbs here. Okay, so that's my focus in this section. So as I'm thinking of that, I need to sort of take the reader on a journey away from the pyramid. So I've just been there with my archeologist and I'm back in the desert. Okay, and that might be a really good adverbial phrase to start, back in the desert or across the desert uh, or not far away. Hmm, back across, I'm gonna put across the desert. Think it across the desert, say it, that makes sense. That's my opening, my punch of I'm gonna write it now. Okay. So capital letter, joined writing. Across the desert. Front adverbial needs a comma. So across the desert, my focus is now shifting to the camel. Uh, the camel sat. Can we have sat? Could have sat could have lazed, ah, as in it's lazing around, lazed uh, tiredly uh, or rested. Mm, rested, that could work quite nicely because it's obviously not doing anything, it's very hot. Uh, rested, uh, laid, uh, we could have that one. Uh, so I think, hmm, another thing that writers do is they try and think of lots of ideas and then pick the best one. So I'm thinking at the moment that rested, and I'm going to have rested lazily. There we go. So rested is a good verb because it's well matched to what the um, camel is actually doing. So rested. So across the desert, the camel rested next to the dig pit. Okay. I think that's going to work quite nice actually. Across the desert, the I just put the archaeologist's camel just to bring this in so they so that they know that it's belonging to him. The archaeologist it's belonging to the archaeologist, so we have possessive apostrophe there. The archaeologist's camel. Rested. Rested lazily next to 
the div hint. And I'm going to think about my next one. I'm thinking I'll just quickly sneak in an extra one here for you before you get going. Uh, I want to now quite quickly get on to the fact that he is chomping away on the um, cartouche. So he chomped noisily. He chomped noisily. I think it's saying it right. It. He chomped noisily on the sapphire cartouche. So capital letter. He jumped noisily on the sapphire cartouche, and that cartouche is like a name plate. But you'll find out more about that in your artwork next week. Uh, on the sapphire cartouche. Lovely. Oh, mustn't forget my full stop. Although, if you like, with me, you could extend this sentence. I'm going to add in a little extra information sub clause, which and I'm going to add glinted, which glinted in the, which glinted in the dazzling sun. Burning sun, blistering sun. Hmm, I'm going to go dazzling because if you're dazzled, that means uh, that the light's shining in your eyes. And um, so that matches the idea of this glinting cartouche, which probably would um, kind of shine into your eyes if it caught the reflection of the sun. So, which glinted in the dazzling sunlight? I'm going to go for. Finish with a full stop. Right, hopefully you can see all of that on there, but I'll read it through just in case you can't. Okay, so we've got this. Across the desert, comma, the archaeologist camel rested lazily next to the big pit. He chomped noisily on the sapphire cartouche, which glinted in the dazzling sunlight. Now I've been thinking about those verbs, haven't I? Uh, I've got rested, so that matches what I'm doing. Chomped is really, really nice. It's exactly describing what he's doing there. Um, he's not sort of chewing um, or anything else. It's a real chomp. Uh, noisily on the sapphire cartridge, which glinted and glinted is a nice, powerful verb as well of what it's doing. It's sort of uh, which shone glinted, little glints, little little bits of light that are um, shining off the surface of it. And I've finished with my full stop to glint in the dazzling sunlight. Brilliant, that's a good starting point. Hopefully that gives you lots of ideas. What I'd like you to do now, as I go back to the slides, okay, is to write your three sentences. Now, it might be more than three sentences, but three sentences, one for each of those pictures would work really, really well. So pause the video now, give it a go, do your best, finish with a flourish, uh, not with a whimper. Uh, and then we will come back together and just have a, a little reflection time. Brilliant. Keep going. Well done, you four. You have made it all the way through to the end of this uh, writing lesson, which has been slightly different with our live modelling here. I hope it's really worked for you. I hope this has really helped you. We can talk about it in our Zoom meeting and um, see if there's anything else that we can be doing to support each other with our writing. Okay, but just for now, finishing off for me, how did you get on today using your adverbials, powerful verbs, and the sounds in your writing? Have you included them? Are there any examples that you're really proud of? What do you think you've done well today, and what would you like to improve? And this one about improvement would be really handy for you to be thinking about ready for tomorrow's lesson, where we are going to go back over our writing um, and edit to improve it before we then write it up and publish it um, and you can send all your photos into the uh, email addresses um, and we can put them up on the screen to show everybody your fantastic work. Brilliant, well done everybody, hope you're really proud of your writing and you feel that you've been successful as a writer today. See you soon. <laughs>